The sky is arguably one of the most important parts of any outdoor photo that we take. And because it's impossible that our camera sees what our eyes see, and in many cases it doesn't even come close, I think it's important that we know how to make that sky look at what we experienced it to be. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. I've got three different ways between Lightroom and Photoshop that you can work with the sky. It's not a one size fits all, so that's why I'm showing you three different ways to do it. What are the pros and cons of each one so that you can adapt it to your own photography? Let's go ahead and get started. I am in Lightroom and we're gonna head up here. If you go on the right hand side, we're gonna click on our masking tool um, in the little toolbar in the top right there. And just incidentally, if you're using Photoshop, uh, it works exactly the same. So I've got a photo open here. You can either open a raw photo or a DNG photo into Photoshop. It'll automatically open into camera raw. Or if you're in Photoshop already, you can always go to the filter menu to the camera raw filter and you'll find that same little masking icon over here on the right hand side. And the tools are exactly the same. So here's what we're going to do. Let's take a look at select sky first. I think that's what everybody goes to since it's, you know, the newest, latest, greatest, and it is, you know, partly AI driven. So it's, it's learning and it's getting better and better. So we'll go to select sky and on a photo like this with where it would be really hard to try to paint or do something in between all of the details. Think a photo with a lot of trees in it, um, a lot of, you know, just anything that's protruding into the sky. I think select sky works best. I think that's gonna be your best bet because it will automatically select the sky. And then in this case, if I wanted to, I just wanna make it maybe a little bit darker, pull down some of those highlights just a little bit. And then we could even push uh, the saturation up a little bit there as well. So something like that, or maybe I want to make it brighter, whatever, whatever the tools you're going to do to it, um, you can do from that point on. And then if, if it ever does, and it, it won't always be perfect, that's where you could use a little bit of your subtract. And I would say to go in here with the brush. So subtract with the brush. And if you found that it, it, it intersected with any of the buildings, you could just take a small brush. And what I would do is do a very, very high feather setting take that feather all the way up to 100 and go in there and try to, to, to blend it in a little bit. But for a lot of detail, I'm gonna go with most of the time select sky. Okay, I find that one to be the best. Now from here, we go into, let's say a photo like this one here. And I think a lot of times our, our inclination is, to, oh, well, you know, we got a sky up there. Let's go up here to select sky. I've already got some masks on this photo, so I'm just gonna click the plus button and just do select sky. This to me is where it starts to fall apart because Lightroom doesn't know that there that I was shooting into the sun. So it doesn't know I'm shooting into the sun. So there's a lot of white going on up here. And if you hover over, you'll even see that sometimes the selection I think is almost too perfect. Okay. It's too good of an edge. And because I was shooting into the sun, because maybe I want to make that a little bit darker, you can kind of see sometimes that edge gets a little bit of a glow. And then you can also see that it did select part of the mountain area, but it left part of it as well. So now there's just a weird transition happening over there. So instead of using select sky, what I would do in this case is I would go with the tool that we've used for years and, and really, really takes its history back to a tool that people used in the camera, which is a, a graduated neutral density filter. And I, I don't believe in using them in camera anymore because it's just, it's so destructive. You're, you're done. Your photo's done the moment you click. And if you didn't make a perfect choice in the field, you're done. So the linear gradient is the same thing as your graduated neutral density filter. So what you do is you click on that. And then from here, I can drag down. All right, and I can control that transition. I can get a very hard transition or I can get a softer transition. You can hold down the shift key and that'll constrain it to a perfect line. So in this case, what I would do is probably a pretty, pretty decent transition there, nothing too harsh. And then I can go in there and bring down that exposure. And for me, that's a more natural way to darken something that, that, that isn't perfect. Okay, and in and, and Lightroom and Photoshop, it's actually going to try to make a perfect selection. And I don't think a perfect selection would be your option here. Same thing on a photo, if you're ever taking something out at the beach or something that's got a perfect horizon. Again, I'm not a fan of select sky because to me, it's too perfect. And, and you're always gonna get that slight little weird 
transition transition that's happening in there. So again, I'm gonna use the same tool that I did before. I'm gonna go down to the linear gradient and I'm gonna pull that from down, from the top down. And for me, that's a much more natural transition because the darkness that I'm trying to add into the sky will actually transition over the horizon line into the water and it just makes it a little bit more seamless. It hides your tracks of some of the editing that you're trying to do. Next, so that was number two. Let's go on to our third option, which I can think of no better time for a very, very quick word from our sponsor. Um, I promise I'll keep it under 60 seconds, but I've got a course called No Light, No Problem. I really believe our, our job as, as, as editing on the computer is to make that scene look like it did when, when we were there taking it. Okay, as I said earlier, our cameras don't see what we see. So I have a course called No Light, No Problem that does just that. It doesn't mean no light, like there's absolutely no light in the photo. It means when, when things just weren't in the, the, the way that we wanted them to be and we can't go back and just reshoot it. So I show you ways to add light, add depth, add dimension to bring those photos to life. It is by far one of my best-selling courses. Very affordable, very easy to watch, and I hope you'll swing by and take a look. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. We left off on our third option here for working with the sky. This is never gonna be my favorite option because there's so many what ifs that go along with it. So all I can do is walk you through a little bit of a thought process, okay? Uh, if you have a very difficult sky to select, you, you gotta start thinking about the way that the tools work. So first, if we go to select sky, I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that it, it didn't really touch any of the mountain range over here, because that's important. That's gonna come up in a second here. So it did a good job there. Over here, not quite great because there's a the little bit of the mountain peaks back there and it's, it's not perfect, okay? So select sky, not a bad option, but it would be difficult for us to go in here and try to brush and feather that away. Not a great option. Uh, linear gradient, again, not gonna be a great option because now I've gotta manually go in and figure out how to get rid of everything that the mountains and the trees and all that. So that's not gonna be a great option. Much like in this photo, it wouldn't have been a great option either because I would have had to do a lot of manual work if I used a linear gradient. So from here, what I like to go to is the range mask, okay? We've got color and luminance and you're gonna have to be the judge of this because you might have a very colorful sky or you might got have a sky that the luminance value, the brightness values of it are very different from everything else. And that's the case for this photo. Like I said, it's not always gonna work for you. So don't think that this is always an option, but for this case, it works out well. I can go to luminance again, sometimes color might be the dominant area of your sky. I'm gonna go to luminance. We got our little eyedropper here and I'm just gonna drag it across the sky, okay? So it's gonna make a luminance range mask based on the brightness values that I selected. Don't worry about down here. We can, we can take care of what's down here in the water very, very easily. What I want you to concentrate on is gonna be the mountains and the trees here. So we head over to the top right and we can see our luminance range mask in the settings. The little bold line is the range that we selected, okay? We can make that a little bit smaller. We can bring that in a bit. And the, the pink is gonna show you your, your range mask. So we can bring that in and I'm gonna to start to bring that in until I see too much of the pink disappear. So we can get pretty, pretty close with it, bring that in. The little sliders on the outside are the fall off. It's the transition. Right now it's got a lot of fall off, which is gonna to transition too much into our mountain. So we're gonna bring that fall off down a bit. A little bit of fall off isn't bad, but we're gonna bring that down as much as we can here. And I think right around this point, actually looks pretty good. I mostly have all pink in the sky. I can see a little bit of pink on the mountain, but that's gonna create that transition. This wasn't, this isn't the case where you want a perfect edge on a sky replacement. You need there, you need a transition to be there. Or it's gonna look fake. Now, if you need a, a stronger, a stronger selection, a stronger edge, I'll give you one last little thing that you can try. And that is come up here to your mask, click on the little pop-out menu, and choose intersect with select sky. What's gonna happen is intersect means take whatever one selection is, and then take whatever another one is, and where the two intersect is what you're going to end up with. So I want you to think about this. Right now we have a selection that encompasses more than the sky. We remember from earlier that select sky did a pretty good job, especially on the mountains over here, not perfect over here, but still not bad but it did a pretty good job on the mountains over here. So since the select sky would have, would have not selected that, 
if I intersect with what I have right now and select sky, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna get the best of both worlds. I'm gonna get the accuracy of what it did over here and over here, but I'm also gonna get the feathered and the, the, the nicer nature of what I was selecting with my range mask. It's a little bit more natural of a fall off because there were so many different values of brightness when it came to the sky we had, okay? Doesn't mean that intersect is always gonna work for you. Uh, sometimes you might be able to come in here and you can subtract a select subject. Select subject won't work in this case because there really isn't a subject in the photo. Sometimes you can subtract the select background so you can subtract things from it. But for me in this case, intersect worked pretty well. I'm just trying to give you different options. Again, never gonna be one size fits all to it. You gotta think the way that these tools think and experiment a little bit. And now I can bring that exposure down, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit, but now I get a much more natural transition. You can see there's some blue up there, so I can even push the saturation up there in the sky, and I'm not gonna worry about affecting anything that we have there in the foreground. Our earlier, you saw a little speed up video of me uh, doing some edits to a photo. I actually have that video free right here. Uh, it's on, you know, just adding a little bit of light and depth and dimension to your photo. So if you're looking for another tutorial to go to that's along the same lines of this and just putting some of that into practice, that's a great place to go next.